the mocks return to Finley Stadium with head coach Tom Art leading the way. We got an opportunity to do something different. You got to do it better than you've ever done it before. You got to communicate better than you've ever communicated before. It's got to mean more to you than it's ever meant to you before. And that's a touchdown. This opportunity, this moment, today, forward. Right, to give that type of effort every single day. Straight back to throw and sack. You've got the opportunity to set the standard for what it means to play at Chattanooga. You're watching Inside Chattanooga Football, hosted by head coach Tom Arth and the voice of the Mox, Jim Reynolds. Inside Chattanooga Football is presented by Allegra. 24-hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. Coca-Cola. Chattanooga Coca-Cola Bottling Company, the world's largest Coca-Cola bottler. Welcome to Inside Chattanooga Football. This is our first show of the season. We have a lot planned for you this entire year. On the show today, as you know, the Mocs open up the football season on the road in Montgomery to take on fifth-ranked Jacksonville State. The Gamecocks prevailed in that game. We'll have highlights of the contest between the Mocs and Gamecocks from last Saturday night. We'll also talk with head football coach Tom Arth. He's now had a couple days to look at film. Is he in a better mood or worse mood than he was Saturday night following that game? And as we know, social media plays a bigger and bigger role in the lives of college football players. For better or for worse, social media is there. Remember that old adage, once you hit send, you can't get it back. UTC in their preseason hired a social media coach to try and help players how to deal with Facebook, how to deal with the social media. We'll have a special feature on that as well. More Inside Chattanooga Football when we return. That comes your way right after this. This segment of Inside Chattanooga Football is sponsored by Coca-Cola. Chattanooga Coca-Cola Bottling Company, the world's largest Coca-Cola bottler. Born on third down, standing in, now flushed, on the run, under pressure, and he's got to get rid of it, fourth down. Isaiah Mack, the all-conference D lineman, leading the pursuit. Kevin Wilson is the offensive coordinator who is the former head coach at Indiana. Horn's pass is intercepted. Picked up by Kareem Orr. Orr sidesteps out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. Kareem Orr was a freshman All American two years ago at Arizona State where he had six interceptions. First career field goal attempt for Victor Ulmo. And the freshman puts it through the uprights to tie the game at three. Victor Ulmo on from 31 yards, made his first career field goal attempt. This one is up and good. On third down, here's the pressure. Tiano floats it up for Parker, who makes the catch. Number one, this was a six-man blitz, and he had a split second to make the decision. Nick Tiano, and watch him here, throws off his back foot, puts it in a perfect location, catches Marlon Bridges, and good coverage. Just a great job there from Joseph Parker. And watch the pressure um, all over the field. Here's the pressure. Horn over the middle, juggled, and picked off. Lucas Webb with his 11th career interception. Thomas on the sweep, and he is taken down in the backfield by Tavon Lawson. Tiano checks down to Bagley. Ball pops out, but they'll say the ground forced it, and Bagley ruled down at the 40. That does it. Here at the Crampton Bowl in Montgomery, Alabama. Jacksonville State wins this FCS kickoff, knocking off Chattanooga by a final score of 27 to 13.
renowned excellence in men's and women's collegiate competition. Every division, every sport, the Learfield Directors Cup. The prestigious award continues its reign as the crowning achievement in college athletics. To follow your favorite team, like us on Facebook, find us online and on Twitter. The Learfield Directors Cup. My name is Darren Roberts. I am the founding director of the Center for Sports Leadership and Innovation at the University of Texas at Austin. And I also teach classes on leadership at UT. I'm going to make a training camp presentation to the football team on social media etiquette and the value of having a very strong presence on social media. All of us are running small companies, so our brand online represents our own small company and depending on what you post, what you like, what you share, what you retweet, the value of your brand either goes up or down on a daily basis. So it's important to make wise decisions online because they have implications that could uh, prevent people from getting the job that they want. You know, it, it's great to have a presence online. Just be careful about the content that you like and that you share and that you repost. And one important thing that I always tell people is that sharing or liking something is equivalent to co-signing on the original message. And so if, if even though you didn't shoot the video or you didn't take the picture or you did not write the joke, um, by liking or retweeting or sharing it, then you are saying I agree with the message and that can have a lot of negative implications down the road. This segment of Inside Chattanooga Football is sponsored by Allegra. 24 hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. Welcome back to Inside Chattanooga Football. I'm Jim Reynolds along with Mox head football coach Tom Arth and I kind of teasingly said earlier, sometimes when coaches see a game, they say one thing or think one thing. Are you in a better mood or worse mood after watching the video of the game now? You know, I don't know. That's what I've been saying. You know, it's 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 gut wrenching to watch um, because we did leave so many you know opportunities out there and just made so many you know self inflicted wounds that really hurt us. And um, you know, the margin of error is, is really small against and good teams. It's magnified against good teams. So you know, we didn't need to do anything to help them out. Uh, you know, we've you know we we talked to our team yesterday, and it's, you know we're going to put that game behind us. We're not going to forget the mistakes that we made. Um, and we're not going to forget, you know, the steps that we need to do to improve. Um, but we're going to we're going to shift our focus, um, you know, from that game and, and, and really get it back onto to ourselves. Mistakes by guys wearing jerseys or mistakes by guys wearing the coaching shirts. Start start there. You know, I think both. Yeah. I think both really. Um, you know, definitely. Uh, you know, our, we get down inside the the red area after Kareem's interception and. Uh, we get a big play, you know, get a good completion. Quarterback does a great job on a shot play, taking the check down, and we're down inside the five, and um, you know, get a you know run called, and then we switch groupings, and you know, we were in a, a, a heavy set, and we go to you know a, a lighter set, and we didn't, everybody didn't come out of the game, and you know, we got to see that as coaches, you know, I don't know how many, you know, two or three went in, we got to make sure two or three <laughs> come out, you know, we miss that, and. Um, you know, that's inexcusable and, you know, it's, it, it hurt us. We went from second and goal inside the five to second and goal at the nine, which is a dramatically different situation. And I think that at the end of the day, you know, the responsibility is on my shoulders. You know, if we're making mistakes, they're my mistakes. And, you know, we're not doing a good job, good enough job coaching all week. So, um, you know, we got to get that right and we got to, you know, we got to make sure that our players go out there and they don't, you know, they're not in those situations where they're, you know, making mistakes. So. But there were times you guys played awfully good. I mean, the perfect scenario, they, they want the ball first, get the ball first, a force of three and out, and then you guys go from there. Well, that, that was our plan going into it. We wanted to defer. Um, we wanted to kick off. We wanted to pin them in deep. We wanted to have great coverage. We did that. We got a tackle inside the 15, I believe, maybe inside the 20. We came out. We, we stuffed them uh, You know, on, on first and second down. Uh, forced the quarterback to scramble, missed a sack, you know, barely, but he threw it away. They're punting from, you know, their end zone, and then we go out, you know, first down, get a holding call, so we end up losing 20 yards, end up punting, get a interference call on the punt, <laughs> right. and then all of a sudden they got the ball at the 48-yard line, and they flipped the field on us without doing anything. What did you like on offense? Uh, you know, I liked, uh, I liked how Nick played. 
um, you know, I think you start there. I think, you know, going into that situation, tough situation for Nick to be put in, um, and he handled it as well as I think anybody could have. Um, certainly settled in after the first couple possessions. And I was really, really excited with how quickly he got the ball out of his hands. Um, he didn't take any sacks. He didn't put us in a bad situation. He threw the ball away. You know, we had the two interceptions. One, you know, we kind of pulled up, got injured on, on the, the pick six, um, which probably would have been a completion. And the other was a tip pass. But otherwise, I mean, man, he played, he played pretty solid. All right, let's 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 look ahead a little bit. Is this, and the last question is, is this a good scenario now? You have an open date. You have time to correct some of the things we just talked about. It is. It is. I, I'm excited about it. You know, one, it's been a long camp. I mean, we reported July 24th, you know, with the new, you know, the new NCAA legislation allowing us to have that extra week because of the two-a-days. Um, you know, so we've been at it for a while. And, you know, this is a nice time for our players to kind of get their legs back, recover a little bit. Uh, but just, you know, for our team and where we're at, it's nice to be able to, you know, go back and say, all right, well, here's here's all the things that we need to focus on and kind of correct internally before we can really start thinking about playing an opponent again. And, you know, I'm excited that we have this, you know, these few days here to work on it. Mox head football coach Tom Arth. Next time we'll talk about Mox and LSU Tigers. Next time on Inside Chattanooga Football. Inside Chattanooga Football has been brought to you by Allegra. 24-hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. Coca-Cola, Chattanooga Coca-Cola Bottling Company, the world's largest Coca-Cola bottler.